because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. I'll never forget him. I'll never forget him. I'll never forget him. Do Lord remember. For me, I'm so glad. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. I'll Never forget him. I'll never forget him. I'll never forget him. Do Lord remember me. Good Wednesday evening, my brothers and my sisters, to Reverend Parker, to um Mama Bear, Reverend Reginald Smith, to all of our members and friends who have come to join us on a Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, it's after six o'clock, Wednesday evening, we just thank God for his blessings and for his love and for the kind mercies and grace that he has extended to us, and we're grateful for those who are on the teleconference line, and we're just grateful that God has allowed us to come together for another Wednesday rap word, and I tell you, I just can't help but think of the goodness of Jesus. And there's so much, so much, so much, Sister Tiffany Singleton, that I could complain about. But when I think things over, I'm quite sure I'm not the only one who are, who's out there to, can say today that all of my good days outweigh my bad days. And so I won't complain because it could be worse. And we just thank God for what he has allowed us to do. It's good to see Lady Holmes on this evening. And we're just so grateful that God has blessed us and we're grateful to see Sister Lazarus. We lift Sister Lazarus up in prayer for, for, the, for the enemy is trying. The enemy is trying to keep her down physically, but we know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that which we can ask of him tonight. So tonight we're going to look at Bible uh, Word Wednesday, Word Wrap, a little different today. And we're going to walk and walk through this a little differently. And once again, you all know who I am, but I bring you greetings from Holy Trinity Amy Church. Located at 378 Mathis Ferry Road in Mount Pleasant, where the Spirit of the Lord is in control. And we just thank God for the opportunity. And for those of you whose, whose pastor I serve as on tonight, amen. I'm your pastor tonight if you're in the room where the blessings of the Lord will be going on. I've just been singing that song all day today. Oh, how I love Jesus. And it's just, just been, just, just been a refreshing time for me because as the song says, because he first loved me. And I'll never, I'll never forget him. I'll never forget him. And that's why I ask him to always remember me. We just thank all of you. We ask that you go ahead and remind somebody that it's 6.30, not 7 o'clock. Go ahead and remind somebody that it's 6.30, not 7, not, not 7 o'clock. Those on the teleconference, thank you so much. And we just bless God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin our Bible talk for tonight. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for restoration. We thank you for the move of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for just showing up every time we come into your presence. God, we thank you. We thank you for the acknowledgement of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the endowing of your holy power. We thank you for the strength. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for just giving us the knowledge that we need in order to make it from one day to the next. God, it's the middle of the week, and for that, we want to tell you thank you. God, you didn't have to do it, but you did. God, we are on the last week, the last few days of the month of April, and we will be out of the fourth month of 2021, and we just tell God thank you. We tell God thank you. We tell God thank you, because he didn't have to do it, but I am so glad he did. God, bless those who are sick. Bless those who are bereaved. 
Bless those who are ill. Bless those who are recuperating. And God, most of all, just bless your faithful children that we may do what God has called us to do in a time such as this. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. And we're going to ask you tonight. It's going to be um, very, very active tonight. It's going to be where I'm going to um, try. You all might make so many comments. I, I might miss all that's on the chat, but I, I, I just want to it's going to be interactive tonight. And what I want us to look at now, I'm not going to go over the scripture, but I'm going to reference the scripture because I'm going to talk about we are living in an age where we need to be very sure. I mean, very sure. I mean, very sure that we are safe in the arms of the Lord. We need to be so, so, so sure that we're safe in the arms of God, that nothing can pluck us out of the arms of God. Because let me tell you something. The enemy has be, is still the enemy. The, 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 the devil is still the devil, but he has created new demons. Amen, somebody. He has created new ways to distract us off of our focus. And our focus should be on God. Our focus should be on what would the Lord have of me to do today. And so we're going to talk tonight, are we safe? And we're going to look at the letters S-A-F-E. We're going to find out tonight. So you got to get your pencil and write it down as we go forth. We're going to look at the letters tonight safe. S-A-F-E. Amen. The scripture that we're going to reference tonight, the scripture that we're going to reference tonight so that you will be able to go back and read it in its entirety. But it says, I'm going to read Psalms 37. It was one of David's writings. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Um, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. So that's our basic scripture background tonight, and we'll we'll keep referring to others, but that's the background that we will go to tonight. Psalms 37, verses 1 through 7. And I want you to understand now, once again, we're not going to go like we normally do, but we're going to spell out the word safe tonight. That scripture says, out of the New Living Translation, um, and, and some of you, have, and, and I like, now this is one thing I like where the King James Version says, Fret not thyself of evil doers. I love the way that flows. I love the way it flows. But the new translation says for us tonight, Psalms 37, verses 1 through 7. Good to see you, Sister Morgan. It says, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Ooh, I want y'all in here that one. I, I'm shouting just reading that. And it says, commit everything you do to the Lord. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. Verse 6 says, he will make your innocence radiant like the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. And that seventh verse, that seventh verse says, be still. Woo! I read Psalms 37, verses 1 through 7. That seven verse says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Now that's that's our basis tonight. Psalms 37, 1 through verses 1 through 7. I want you to hear just a little bit of this, just a little bit of this, and then we're gonna discuss our lesson tonight. Because the Lord is my servant.
that's that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. How many of you can say that tonight? That the Lord is your shepherd. I have everything I need. He helps me to rest. He helps me. He helps me. He restores my failing health. And he helps me to do what all of us him. That's why I say I'm safe. Are you safe? Are you safe tonight? Okay, that, that, that's all I'm going to tease you with tonight. That's all I'm going to tease you with tonight because I want you to, we're going to look at what does it mean to be safe. S-A-F-E. We're going to look at what does it mean to be safe in the arms of the Lord. Now, Psalms 37 has already told us to, to, to fret not ourselves of the, of the evildoers. Don't worry about the wicked and don't, 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 don't consume yourself with that foolishness because the Lord's going to handle them. They're going to be like grass that's going to soon fade away. But in order for that to happen, you have got to be safe in the arms of the Lord. And so we're going to, we're going to look at that tonight. S-A-F-E. Okay. Now the first letter we look at and pastor, how can I be saved? How can I say Psalms 37 and take a delight in knowing that I am safe? Well, first of all, the S means scriptures. You have to delight yourself in the scriptures. You have to know what the scripture says. You have to understand what the scripture says. You've got to make sure that you are reading, rereading. Good to see you, Sister Annie. I thought I was wondering where you were. You have to make sure that you are and you are saturating yourself in the scriptures of the Lord. Because the scriptures gives us a road map to where God wants us to be. And yes, there are going to be pitfalls in our lives, but when we know the scriptures, all right, come on now. When we know the scriptures, we know that we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and we'll fare no evil. When we know the scriptures, we'll know that thou art thy, thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. We, if we know the scriptures, when this earthly tabernacle shall dissolve like snow, we've got a building not made with hands. If we know Know the scriptures. We'll know that John said, I saw 144,000, but then I looked again and I saw a number that no man could number. If we know the scripture, we'll know to trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. If we know the scriptures, we can be safe because in knowing the scriptures, you will understand that there's safety in the scripture. If you understand that, 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 that God has a remedy in his scripture for everything that we have to do, everything that we go through. Pastor, it does not say anything about me being sick. It does not say anything about me, me, me being made well. Yes, it does. The scripture says, mm, the scripture says, the scripture says, he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of his peace Peace are upon the and by his stripes we are healed. So, in order to be safe in the Lord, the first thing we've got to do is that ask, we have to be saved. We have to know the scriptures. We have to know what the word of God says. That's why some of you are wasting your time trying to get people back who has done you wrong. Because if you know the scriptures, Oh, y'all will catch me midway tonight. If you know the scriptures, the scripture says that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So you won't waste your time trying to get even. You won't waste your time trying to, 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 to make sure that, that, that you get a step ahead. Because if you know the scriptures, I'm talking about being safe now. If you know the scriptures, you will know that the first is going to eventually be last. And the, the last is going to eventually be first. 
Okay, if you know the scriptures, you won't let these false prophets, you won't let these um, palm readers, you won't let these folks tell you when the world is coming to an end because the scripture says, no man knows the day nor the hour. Not even the angels in heaven knows. Okay, so if you, in order to be safe, the first thing you've got to do, you've got to know your word. You've got to know the scriptures. So that S stands for the scriptures that you must know. Just like some of you, because you don't know, you don't know, you would hear people say, um, oh, the Bible says if you make one step, he'll make two. That's nowhere in the Bible. That's what our foreparents said to us. That's what we saw them doing. At least that's what it appeared to us at that time that they were doing it. But that's not scriptural. That could very well be true. But you got to know the scriptures because everything people quote you is not necessarily scriptures. Okay, it's not necessarily scriptures. If, if you're sitting up in church and you don't know your scriptures, and I'm not saying you have to have every one of them in your heart, but you ought to study God's words enough to know that when something goes wrong, you can go to the scripture. Like you're sitting in church and someone will say, uh, uh, when we get back into the fellowship hall or when we get, get back in face-to-face -face, um, worshiping, and someone says, turn the Psalms 151. When you say, turn the Psalms 151. And when you have it, Say, thank you, Lord. And you thank you, Lord. There is no Psalms 151. But if you do not study, oh, my, 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 my God. If you do not study the scriptures, you won't be safe because you can be led astray and you will not be covered under the blood of Jesus. We are allowing some people to hold our past over our heads. But if you know the scriptures, the scripture says you can ask for forgiveness and he'll cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. But you got to know the scriptures. Okay, that's S, that's S, that's S. A means you have to activate the scriptures. Okay, see, there's one thing to know it, but you got to activate it. Pastor, what do you mean you've got to activate it? You have to not only be hearers, but you have to be doers of the word also. You can talk a good talk, but are you walking a good walk? Are you walking line upon line and precepts upon precepts? Are you walking according to the word of God? You've got to activate it. He says, faith without work is dead. You can walk around saying you have faith while things are going well, and that's good. But the minute you hit a rocky road, your faith goes on vacation. But you've got to understand, you, you must know the scriptures. That's the S in being saved. But you got to A, activate the scriptures. You got to marinate that stuff. And I, I, I'll give you an example, sister, sister, the lady Holmes was, you know, you know, you know, you know, and y'all, y'all know I love my wife. Sister, lady Holmes knew I was coming home from work Monday and, 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 you know, just, you know, time that sort of passed and she wasn't feeling well. And, and so what, 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 what she did, she, she, she wanted to, you know, y'all, 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 um, high class folks, y'all don't know anything about this, but she needed to thaw out some chicken quickly. Okay, so we all know that if you put salt in the water, come on somebody, it helps to thaw the chicken out. Well, guess what? She forgot that she used salt in the warm water to thaw the chicken out. So guess what? When she went to season the chicken, she added more seasoning. So for me, the chicken was just right. But for her, it was too seasoned. So pastor, what are you trying to say? Not only... Does it have, you have to know the scriptures, but you have to marinate yourself in it. That scripture has to be so much entwined in your heart that you may not sin against God. And the only way that you can make the scriptures come to life is you got to activate it. Activation is when folks are talking about you and folks are, are saying mean and evil things about you.
and you still walk on because you know that you you are anointed. You know that God has blessed you. You made a mistake, yes, but you you know the anointing hadn't left you even though you failed. And folks say, well, why, 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 why you why why you why why you walking around, man? Turn around and defend yourself. No, because I'm activating the scripture that says, "Touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm." Because the tongue, that every tongue that shall rise up against thee, it's going to be dealt with. So you got to know the scriptures, but the A means you got to activate it. Don't just say, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. If you know that scripture, I shouldn't hear you. I can't stand her. I just hate to see her come in a room. Oh, they irk my nerve. No one should walk into a room and change your attitude but the Holy Spirit. No one should walk into a room and your whole disposition changes. No one should have that much power over you but the Holy Spirit. So you've got to know your scriptures and then you've got to activate it. You've got to put that stuff into action. I don't care how much of a good cook you are. you got to stir that batter before you put that cake in that pan. So you got to activate that which you know. But in order to know it, you got to study the scriptures to show yourself approved. Okay? So now we got the S. You got to know the scriptures. That's how you be saved. Okay? You got to activate the scriptures. That's the A. You got to activate it. You have to put into action that which you said you believe. I believe that God is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I have to put it into action. When I don't know how God is going to do it, I've got to have enough faith, and I, I'm getting ahead of myself. I've got to have enough scripture and word within me that I've got to put it into action. That's why some of us, have so many pity parties because we give the devil credit for stuff the devil had nothing to do with. You were just lazy and disobedient because they see if you know the scriptures and you activate it, the scripture says that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. Check the word. So you can't think because you're saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, running for Jesus, that you won't have any issues. You won't have any hiccups. You won't have any hold up on this journey because you will. That's how you are tested. Job, a man, Job was a man who walked upright before God. But yet he was tested. Jesus hung on the cross for no sins of his own, but for you and I, but even Jesus was tested. <clears throat> See, if you knew your scripture, you would know that. Because after he had been in the wilderness for 40 days, what did the devil say? If you jump, look, look, I'll give you all of this. And that's what's wrong with some of us. Some of us will sell out for stuff that's already ours. Well, Pastor, you just, you just, you just, you just, you just messed me up. Some of us will sell out stuff that's already ours. You will sell out good, good character, good work ethics, just to be popular. And don't you know that God said that he will take care of that? Because God said, if I be lifted up, from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. So if you just lift them up, activate that. Activate that. Praise them in the good times. Praise them in the rough times. Praise them on your sick bed. Praise them in the sanctuary. Praise them with the harps. Praise them. That's why, yeah, 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 yeah. That, see, 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 if people knew their word, they, were, they wouldn't be complaining. Oh, they're so noisy in that church. You better watch out because when 378 Doors open back up again. 
We're going to have tambourines, washboards, cowbells, you name it. Because everything that belongs to God, we're going to bring it into the temple. Because you've got to activate what the word says. Because you would know if you study the scriptures that if you so high sedity and so, 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 oh God help me tonight. If you so high class going to hell on a handbasket and you all of that in the bag of chips, you would realize that the Bible says the scripture says when, when, when God exalts you, there's nothing no man can do. And you're missing out your blessings because you're so busy being here, there, and everywhere. But if you stand still and let the Lord fight your battle, victory will be yours. You have to activate it. You have to activate it. Mm -hmm. We're talking about being safe tonight. For those of you who are just joining, our background scripture is Psalms 37, 1 through 7. But we are talking about being safe tonight. And we said the S, you got to know the scriptures. You have to know the scriptures. And even if you don't know them verbatim, know enough in your heart that you know what it means. And you don't take it out of context. Because sometimes we take scriptures out of context because we don't study the history of the, of the scripture. Yeah, mm-hmm. All right, scriptures, you got to activate the scriptures. You got to be hearers and doers. Pastor, but I, I mess up sometimes. Guess what? Everybody around you mess up at one point or another. And if they tell you that they don't, go to the scriptures. Any man that says he has not fallen short is a liar. And the truth is not in him. That's That's scriptures. That's why I don't, uh, you know, folks who come around and trying to impress me with titles, names, and people they know, that don't impress me. Where folks say, oh, I know his past, I know his history. That don't excite me because guess what? If you dig in anybody's past deep enough, you find something. But you're only going to find if you go looking. You will only find if you go looking. And, you know, I, 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 I would have to tell a relative of mine one time, go, stop trying to find out who else is your family. Because it might shock you. So there's some things you just need to leave alone. Amen. Okay. And then, 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 then the, the F. Okay. Scriptures. Activate it. And the F. The F in being safe. You have to be faithful to the word of God. You cannot just serve God when you choose to do it. You have to be faithful in the good times and the bad times. You have to be faithful even when it takes every ounce of your energy. Because let me tell you, and I'm not saying that man means to do it every time. I'm not saying it because I'm guilty. I'm guilty of it. Oh God, I'm guilty of it. And Lord, I'm praying. Sometimes men will let you down, not intentionally. Sometimes they do now, but not, not intentionally. But we become so overwhelmed. But God is faithful to us. So why can't we be faithful to God? Faithful. Not faithless, but faithful. For the scripture, I'm going back to the S. The scripture says, be faithful until death. And there is a crown of righteousness laid up for you. Scripture. You have to be, some of us are not faithful to nothing. I tell a lot of young couples today, and that's, that's why I, I tell people I'm on a hiatus of, of doing weddings. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I told, I told this lady homes, I'm, I'm, I'm just pausing it for a while because some folks are so busy being faithful to planning the wedding that they don't want to be faithful to save their marriage. 
Oh God, I just stepped on some toes because I lost two people. Oops. You have to be faithful. Some folks are not faithful to their jobs. They're not faithful to their families. They're not even faithful to themselves. But you have to learn to be faithful to the word of God. Because remember, God, the word says that God, God is not a man that he should lie. And I'm going to be faithful because if I go to the scriptures, the scripture says before one dot, one tittle of God's words shall fail, heaven and earth will pass away. So what we've got to understand, yeah, I'm on somebody's street. What we've got to understand is that we have got to be faithful in our doing. Don't be faithful when you're the president of the auxiliary or the ministry. Don't be faithful when you're in the limelight. Don't be faithful just because you got folks coming to you. You be faithful even when you in your house by yourself. And that's why people don't understand. And you can ask anybody who knew me from a young child. I never needed a whole lot of people. And my sister Annie would tell you, I never needed a whole lot of people. I really didn't need anybody else to praise God because I did it all by myself. But I've got, you got to be faithful. And being faithful means you make sacrifices. There's nobody on this planet that will have everything their way all the time. Woo. And if you hadn't learned from anyone else, you should have learned from 45. You can't, you can't have your way all the time because sometimes your way is contrary to the word of God. And if it's contrary to the word of God, and let me tell you something. Yes, God will give you, God will give you the desires of your heart. But some of us forget the first part of that scripture. You got to delight yourself in the word. That no matter what you're going through, you got to be excited. And the excitement comes because you're faithful. You'll be able to sing. And some of you need to stop singing this song because you really don't mean it. But for those of us who mean it, I'll go if I have to go by myself. Some of us need to stop singing it. Because you don't go if a crowd doesn't go. You need, sometimes you have to walk alone because the people who are walking with you will not understand what God is doing with you. And so you've got to learn to be faithful unto God because God will never let you down. Yes, you will go through disappointments. Yes, you will have your trying moments. That's right, Reverend Parker. In the word of God, it's a hiding place. If you're faithful to him, he'll hide you in the secret place of his most high. And folks wondering why you look like you should be on the ground being walked upon, but you're walking on hills and mountains because it's your faithful to God. I tell folks sometimes, I have never, oh my God, Lord, help me tonight. You have to understand, you've got to trust God enough to take you to the next level without you knowing everything. I, I, I have a, a grand, grand, grand nephew, a grand nephew. Um, um, and, and, and he tells my mother-in-law all the time, um, now nah, nah, don't let me, don't, don't, don't let me see what, what, what you used to cook that with. Cause I, I don't want to eat it, but, 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 but he'll eat it. 
lick his fingers after it's done. So sometimes you won't know what 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 method God is going to take you through to get you to where God wants you to be. But if you're faithful, he will never leave you nor forsake you. But that's if you know the scriptures. Because the scripture says when mother and father forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. That's word. But you have to be faithful. You can't be faithful to the ministry as long as things going your way. You can't be faithful as long as everybody likes you. You can't be faithful just when the limelight is on you. You have got to say, Lord, I'm available. How many of you tonight, if you on the teleconference, you say amen when I ask this question. And if you're in, on, on Facebook, just, just, just send up a heart. But don't do it just because I'm asking you to do it. But I want you to think about it. How many of you are willing to sacrifice in order to be faithful unto God? Amen. Hallelujah. Because I'm willing to make that sacrifice. Because some of the people who started out with me, they're no longer with me. Amen. And that's because that's the way God designed it. You have to understand. And then for those of you, and that's why you ought to stop letting people um, surround you and cover you and, 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 and try to make you God and you trying to base people lifestyle. The scripture says, let the wheat and the tear grow what? Together. And he'll do the separating. All you have to do is lift him up. And if you lift him up, he'll draw the rest. That's why some of our churches aren't growing because we're trying to run the church. The church is not ours. The church belongs to God. Because you are the church. So what we've got to understand, to be saved, ask, you got to know your scriptures. There's no way of getting around it. You have to know your scriptures. And secondly, A, you have to activate the scripture. You have to turn on the switch. As I was preparing and I was sitting in the room and I couldn't figure out, couldn't figure out, like, well, you know, I got to turn my lighting on. I said, why? why? I, said, I, I had to go back to the wall and turn the switch on. I didn't have the ceiling light on. Some of us have to flip the switch on. You have to activate it. Okay? And look like you. And if you are faithful, let me tell y'all something. When you are faithful to God, and I'm telling you what I know. I'm tell I'm tell I'm telling you. I I I I'm not telling you something that I made up. I'm telling you something that I know. When you are faithful to God, God will take that little bit you have and make it a lot. God will stretch it beyond what you you can't even imagine. But some of us, because we don't know the scriptures, we storing up things. Check the scripture. There was a man who, who, who built a second barn because he had so much stuff. You, and I, I say this all the time, but I need people to understand. You can't take that stuff with you. But we have to be faithful. We have to be faithful. Know the scriptures. Activate the scriptures. Be faithful to the word of God. And then finally, the E. You have to exercise your faith within the word. 
If I'm going to say, do not worry about the wicked or the evil, evil, the envy, those who do wrong, I have to exercise that. If I say that God is a healer, I have to exercise that. If I say that God is a protector, I have to exercise that. If I say that God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory, I have to exercise that. If I say God is a comforter, I have to exercise that. Now, don't get me wrong. Just because I know he's a comforter does not mean that I will not share tears because it's when I share tears, he comforts me. So stop letting folks think shedding tears is a sign of weakness. That's a sign of relief to let yourself know it's going to be all right. Just like somebody said, all the word says, all the word says, trouble don't last always. I ain't in the word. It's true, but it's not scripture. Okay, and we've got to know why we say what we say. Hello, somebody. How many of you know, may the Lord keep watch between me and thee while we absent one from another? Mm -hmm. Sounds nice. Sounds peaceful. But that scripture came from two brothers who didn't trust each other, who owned a piece of land. And because they didn't trust each other, they had to ask the Lord to watch my brother while we missing. While we go our separate ways, Lord, you watch him because I don't trust him. But when you exercise your faith, you realize that what God has for you, it's for you. When you exercise your faith, you can look at your enemies and just say, you know what? In a few days, you'll be my footstool. Mm -hmm. You have to exercise your faith within the word of God. Let us stop be self-seekers. We seek approval for ourselves. But when was the last time you asked yourself, is God pleased with what I'm doing? Is God happy with the way that I'm living? Am I pleasing God? Am I living according to what he says? Because you've got to exercise it. One of the reasons, one, and I use, I use excuses. I use excuses. Y'all don't have, y'all don't have to call yourselves out tonight, but I'm going to I'm going to talk about me. And if it sounds like you, I use excuses. For not exercising. Or oh, I say, oh, it's the knee. I got to get a new seat for the bicycle. But guess what? All of those are excuses. And until I begin to exercise, I'm not going to get rid of the stomach. So you have to exercise faith within the word. If God says he's going to do it, God's going to do it. If God says, I will, and we say it, if he brings you to it, he'll take you through it. We say that, but how many of you really believe that? Because if you believe if he brings you to it, he'll take you through it. You have to exercise that faith in the word. In the words that there's nothing, nothing too hard for God. The word says, if you exercise, there is nothing too hard for God. No thing. Not a thing. But we have to exercise it. You have to walk in it 
You have to walk into your faith. You have to walk into your prosperity. You have to walk into your blessings. You have to walk into your anointing. You have to walk into your deliverance. You have to walk into what God has for you. You got to get up off of your lazy behind and do some exercise. Some of us want God to put the food on the table, then come back, get the silverware, and feed us. No. You have to exercise your faith. If you believe that God's going to do it, stand on his word. Stand on his word. And I believe God. I believe God. I believe God will do it. And he has never failed me yet. I got angry because he didn't do it my way. But he didn't fail me. He just knew what was best for me. Because sometimes we don't know what's best for ourselves. We think we know it because it glitters and it makes noise. But that's why that verse says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. I'm about to turn on somebody's street, but don't you put me out the car. That's why some of us in so much debt we are today, because the fact you didn't wait on the Lord. You wanted what somebody else wanted and you went and done it your way and now you can't get out of some of the mess you're in. And then you call it on the Lord, wailing and a weeping. That's good, but you didn't call on it when you got into it. So are you safe tonight? Psalms 37, 1 through 7. Hallelujah. Somebody said debt street. That's right. And not only debt street, but and let me tell you something. Some of us are existing, but we're not living. Now, Pastor, you just, you just confused me. We existing, but we're not living? No. Let me tell you, when you're existing, you can't move till somebody else moves. You have to watch who's watching you when you shout. You have to be careful who you praise God around, you know. You always unhappy, always crying, as my mom would say, poor mouth. Always finding an excuse. Always saying, poor me. Why are they treating me like this? But see, what you forget to tell the pastor, what you forget to tell your prayer partner, what you forget to tell your brother and sister in Christ is what you did in order for you to get to that place. We need to stop being more transparent if we're going to exercise, being, exercise faith within the word. Don't tell me your side because, there, see, there's three sides to every story. There's three sides to every story. Yours, theirs, and the truth. And like I used to tell my kids, and you better hope yours falls on the side of the truth. But you got to be faithful. You got to exercise that stuff. Because faith without work is absolutely dead. I don't care how pretty. I, and I know because she'll tell me all the time she'll do a whole lot of cooking. But I don't care how much Sister Raven mixed that pound cake. I don't care how much she mixes it. Put it in the bunt pan and set it on top of the stove and pray that it bakes. Guess what? It's not going to happen. You have to put it in the oven. That's right, Brother Reggie. You got to put it in the oven. And that oven gets hot. Come on, somebody. Y'all know where I'm going with this. That oven gets hot, but it bakes the cake, doesn't it? And sometimes life is going to take us through some fire. But you got to understand if you know the word, and I'm getting happy right about now, and I'm, it's time for me to go. If you know the word, the word says that King Nebuchadnezzar put men, um, three brothers in the fire. If you know the word, I'm talking about if you know the word now, if you know the scripture. 
He put Sister Terry, he put three of them in the fire. But when he looked, there were four. Now you go back and read the scripture. Now you go back and read it. You read the book of Daniel. It was, he, he, he said, and come on, you my, my Bible readers. It says that there were four in the fire. The king looked and he said, the fourth one looks like the son of God. Now, according to the word, according to the scripture, oh God, three of them came out. But nowhere does it say the fourth one came out. Now, if you find it, you text me 843-509-2427 and tell me where it is. The reason why the fourth one didn't come out is because the Holy Ghost knew that some of you would put me in the fire in 2021. The Holy Ghost knew that some of us would go through hell under the last administration. But while we were in the fire, God was right there with us. You got to know your word. The word says God has two answers. Yes and amen. You have to know your word. You got to activate it. You got to live it. I was talking to somebody today about 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 about, about death and funeral arrangements, and they looked at me. They says, "Holmes, and man, you just so you just talk about this thing so comfortably." And as I was praying, I said, "Because the word says, man that is born of a woman ain't got but a few years, and it's full of misery, and it'll soon be cut off." A woman gave birth, birth to me. So that means I got to leave here. So why am I going to live in denial that I'm either going to go through the sleeping way of death or I'm going to be in the rapture? I got to check up out of here. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. This world is not your home. This is not your final destination. And I don't know about all of you, but I'm glad this ain't my final stop. I'm glad it's not my final stop. But you've got to know that you're saved tonight. Are you safe? Are you safe tonight? Only you can answer that. Sister Hattie, when they play baseball, they run around those bases. They run around those bases. And sometimes nobody pays attention to first base. They don't pay attention to second base. They don't pay attention to third base. But everybody watch home plate. Because when that person comes into home plate, some come sliding, some come running, some come going back and forth, but the umpire has to say, you're safe. And don't you know that that's what the Holy Spirit will be? He will keep you safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stop worrying what folks going to do to you. That's right, great is. Thy faithful, the great is thy faithful. Morning by morning, new mercies. <laughs> I see all I have needed. God has provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Are you safe tonight? Are you safe tonight? The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but unto him that endureth until the end. That's the only way you're going to hear that you're safe. 
Stop worrying. Stop fretting. Stop getting yourself all out of whack. Stop worrying about when your turn is coming. Because let me tell you something. Some of the stuff you asking God for, you don't know what you asking God for. But because somebody else has the calling to do it, come on somebody, you want to try and do it, but that may not be your calling. So you have to walk within your calling. You have to work within your calling. And that's when you'll be safe. And don't let it be said that you, you got out of the way of God. And as I close tonight, Psalms 37 and 40 says this, the Lord helps them, rescuing them from the wicked. He saves them and they find shelter in him. I sense we tell that's when you're safe. So Psalms 37 tonight, we looked at verses one through seven, but I ask you the question, are you safe? Not are you saved? Because see, if you do those four things, it, it comes naturally when you're saved. And salvation is not something for the elite. Because the, the scripture says, a well man needs no physician. But it's those who are sick. And I want you to understand, when we get back into these fancy buildings, you need to treat the tabernacle like a hospital. Pastor, huh? You need to treat the tabernacle like a hospital. And every one of us who come there week after week, time after time, we are coming in sick. Sick of the injustice. Sick of the foolishness. Sick of the killing. Sick of our young boys and girls giving their lives over the stuff that should not be. Sick of children rising up against parents. Sick of the government doing things that are not pleasing in the eyesight of God. Sick of the foolishness. Sick of wickedness. We ought to be sick of it. And when we come into the house of the Lord, we ought to come into a hospital so that when we leave, if we don't feel better right then and there, we ought to leave with a prescription that after taking the prescription a couple of days, we'll feel better. Woo! Somebody will catch that tomorrow morning when you're fixing your pancakes. Ah! You got to be safe. You got to be safe. You got to be safe. Know your scriptures. Activate the scriptures that you know. Be faithful to the word and exercise your faith. I need you. And as I close, we can't pick and choose who we help. Mm. We can't judge a person and say, oh, they ought to be able to do this. They should, if they had, they didn't do it. So guess what? You can't hold that over their heads. Because everybody didn't, and you know, um, a, 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 a lady, and I'm done for the night. I had a, a secretary when I worked at a school, and you know, it used, it really used to, it really used to. Uh, Sister Terry, let me tell you something. It, I would say good morning, I would come in and say good morning, and they wouldn't respond, and that thing used to get up under my skin. Oh, that thing, oh, that thing used to irk me because my mama taught me even a dog deserves a good morning, and when you weren't saying good morning back to me. You were, you were saying I was less than a dog. That thing used to get to me, Sister Georgetta. But then the secretary called me aside one day. And she said, Mr. Holmes, you got more degrees than me. 
But I want you to remember this. Your mother didn't raise everybody. I said, huh? She said, some of the things that you were taught, other people weren't taught. That doesn't mean you have to stop doing it because you were taught it. But don't take for granted that they knew it. So sometimes we have to reach back and do some teaching. Now, I'm, I'm done for tonight. I hope you've learned something on this Wednesday wrapped word. But are you safe? Are you safe? Now, 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 Lady Holmes, I'm going to let you make the decision. Um, cause I don't know if you're watching this with your mother, but I, 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 there's a song I was playing this, this weekend. And, and, and because my mother-in-law was with us, um, I had to turn it off, but I want to end with this song tonight. But I want you to understand something. In order to do this, you got to make sure you're safe. You have to make sure that you are doing what God has called you to do. Power on. You have to make sure that you know the scriptures. You have to make sure you're activated. One of these mornings won't be very long. You look for me. That's what I'm living for. Where there'll be nothing, nothing to do. But simply walk around heaven. That's why I'm trying to be safe. That's why I'm trying to be safe. Guess what, y'all? My, my mother will be waiting. <laughs> and my father, too. My father, my too. <laughs> but I'm going to walk around. around Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for a blessed night. We thank you for speaking, God. We thank you for using me. In the manner that you have decided. God, I thank you tonight for just speaking. God, I, I thank you tonight for us asking, are we saved? God, we ask that you look at one sister, Lazarus, right now, that's even watching us at the emergency room. God, that we thank you that you shall be able to touch, heal, and deliver. And God, those who we do not know their conditions or their situations, God, bless them right now. God, I got, I, got, I got news today that I got a, a first cousin that, that, that was hospitalized today because of COVID-19. But God, I thank you right now in advance because God, you promised to put no more on us than we can bear. God, we thank you, God. We ask that you speak peace right now and that you do more for us than we're able to do. And I promise you, God, that we'll be so faithful and careful to give you the praise. God, we bless you tonight. We thank you tonight. We worship you tonight. We adore you tonight. And in Jesus' name we pray. Give us traveling mercies as we leave this, this platform. But we do not leave your presence. And we just want you to watch over us. In Jesus' name. And the children of God shall say amen. God bless you. And I want you to remember this as we leave. I want you to remember this as we leave. And guess what this was tonight? Guess what this was? Hallelujah. Yes, he is. This ain't no ordinary Russia. Woo! I'm going to give God all I have. Because I want to be saved. Y'all have a good night. I'm going to go now and I'm going to eat my garlic greens. Woo! 